Welcome back everyone to another video and we have something a bit different on the bench today. So this is an Epson Expression 10,000 XL graphics art scanner. So this is quite a high resolution scanner, especially for its size. It is about 4800 by 2400 DPI, uh, a bit bigger than A3 scanning capacity, so it is quite an Im impressive beast. It is not the latest and greatest. I think they're up to like a 13,000 XL now, but I paid about $850, $900 for this Australian, and they run about six and a half, seven thousand dollars for a brand new model which uses LED lighting instead of this xenon gas discharge tube which is what I prefer. I think LEDs have inferior uh, light capabilities compared to xenon gas tubes. But anyway that's that's neither here or there. This is still a lot cheaper and I'm glad to have this thing. But we need to uh, give this thing a cleanup and a restoration. So I thought I'd just show you what it takes to actually clean the image reading optics inside one of these things. I've already partially dismantled it because I've been repolishing this uh, platen glass for quite a period of time. You can technically replace this glass, but it's not super easy to get one exactly cut to size and having it chamfered along the edges so you don't cut yourself. But I have pulled off this uh, white reference plate already, which normally sits over here, which is what calibrates the CCD before it does a scan. So that normally sits there and we'll, we'll put that back on afterwards when we get to that. So yeah, I'm going to pop the top off this thing and I'm going to show you what it takes to just clean the optics because it seems to be why most people get rid of these things for some reason because they don't realize you can actually service the mirrors inside to clean them because otherwise the image degrades and you get like a foggy lack of contrast sort of scan coming out of it or you might get lines and scratches all sorts of weird things. Pretty much every scanner I've taken apart, and I've done quite a few of them, just has four screws on the top in all the uh, corners. And we can just lift the entire top of the unit off and we can get into the optics. So let's get started and I'll show you what's involved. Right, so the first thing we want to do is remove the backing plate and these generally just lift straight out like that. You just don't want to be dealing with it while you're removing the entire scanner and to remove the top it's pretty much the same deal with basically every scanner I've worked on with this one that they're, they're hiding them under these little plastic clips in each corner now there is a uh, fifth screw on the back which I'll show you some separate footage of because this thing's a bit hard to work with on my bench and uh yeah, we need to get this off. There we go. So now we can just remove all the screws. And that's all there is to it. So just need to grab the sides of it and we can shuffle this entire top section off. Now with the top glass off, we've got to slide the entire CCD assembly out from under its little alcove and we just grab it on each end and uh, grab it by something rigid near the rails and we can just drag the whole thing forward and we'll probably just go at this access area here. So there is a screw in the middle which we need to remove is all good just one screw and um, so we've got clip 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 and there's two clips on each end also and it's sort of hooked in on this side for the top plate so you got to sort of get under it while you're popping these clips up otherwise it'll try and snap back in again I'm just using a little flat blade here and we can open this up and these clips on the front just need to pop also. And there's one at the back, which we should be able to just maneuver out, I think, like that. Uh, unhook it, there you go. And there is a grounding wire just there also, which we'll probably just leave 
sitting there. I'll just put this out of the way. And uh, I'll grab my camera and I'll give you a better angle on this. Right, so looking at the CCD assembly, uh, this is a lot more complicated than your average scanner setup. The main reason is because this has an auto-focusing system, which we'll, we'll get to in a second. So basically we have this lamp here, which is a xenon gas discharge tube, which lights up the document that's sitting on the glass. That reflection goes down into this mirror assembly. So there are five mirrors plus an objective lens that sits just before the CCD. And we'll, we'll have a look at that. So basically the image goes down onto this mirror here. That mirror bounces the image up to here. This mirror bounces it down to another sneaky mirror that's hiding under here. Now this mirror has a slight bend to it that compresses the image horizontally inwards and then sends it down into these mirrors here. So there's one, one here, bounces it down, and then that bounces it 90 degrees into this objective lens here, which then goes into this CCD just here. Quite complicated. Um, there is a rack and pinion system here, which moves this assembly down here, and that changes the focal plane for uh, this whole scanner. So you might have something that's sitting slightly off the glass when you're scanning it, or the glass might be deformed because something's pressing down on it because of the weight, and that will change the focal point. So this scanner does a auto-focusing procedure every time you're scanning a document. Quite a rare thing to see in a scanner, and I guess that's only that's why it's in a high-end one. You don't really see it in the smaller A4s. So you can see the amount of dust that is in here. This lens has a slightly cloudy appearance to it. And yeah, it needs a lot of cleaning. I shouldn't say lens, actually. This is more of a mirror. This is the primary mirror because this is facing upwards. It will get a lot of dust settling on it. It's not the worst by far. I've seen a lot worse than this, but it's definitely not clean and uh, yeah, all these other mirrors are going to need cleaning also. So I tend to just blow them out first with compressed air. I'll use a microfiber to try and grab any loose dust. And then I will finish it up with a uh, CCD cleaning kit for a digital camera. And I'll run that across the, the mirrors just to do like a final pass. So I'm going to get that done and uh, we'll see what we end up with. Right, so I've got this thing reassembled. I'll overlay some footage where I just did a test scan just to make sure I didn't damage anything. And I think this looks really good. The color is a little bit off, but I am looking at purchasing the full Silverfast suite with the color calibration cards and run through and do a full calibration on this scanner again. It is quite the beast. Um, and I need to just make it clear that if you've never messed with scanner optics or mirrors and whatnot before, tread very carefully. They are very sensitive. Don't use anything really aggressive in there for cleaning the mirrors. Start with compressed air. Try to avoid touching anything if you can, but odds are if it's like a decade old scanner, you'll probably have to get in there and physically clean the mirrors. 
For a glass mirror cleaner, I tend to use Autoglim Fast Glass. It's safe for tints, it's safe for optical coatings. I've never had an issue with this damaging anything. It's very good stuff. Use brand new microfibers whenever you're doing this. Do not reuse them when going near the mirrors and use very light pressure, especially when you're near the center of the mirrors because you can snap them. Yeah, so this scan came out really good and this was only like half resolution or quarter resolution. It still has a long way to go and it's already outdone the actual print quality on this uh, document. And this is some vintage space art stuff that I'm doing some archiving and scans of. So that's it for another video. Uh, glad to have this thing in my collection. It's going to come in handy for some upcoming projects. And yeah, it's just a great purchase. It was nice and cheap. Well, not cheap, cheap, but cheaper than buying a brand new one of these things. I got this one also for $100. I'd been using this briefly, and this is from Microtech, which is the main competitor for Epson. This is only about 600 DPI versus the 4800 by 2400 on this one. That's optical resolution. But it's just interesting, and I thought I'd just cover this quickly. The Microtech, in some ways, seems better built than the Epson. The, the glass is thicker. Uh, I would say that overall it just feels more robust. The CCD assembly that sits under here is all die-cast metal versus the plastic in the Epson. I guess there's pros and cons for that with when it comes to image optics and metal expanding and contracting. But it's just interesting comparing the design philosophy. So this is a portrait design, this is a landscape design. But I do really like how you can feed documents through this thing, especially oversized documents, and there's no real ledges or anything. And there's a lot of advantages in that that I actually preferred when I was using it. And you can get an image tech version or competitor for this Epson scanner in the same chassis as this, as near as I can tell. So yeah, that, that's quite interesting. I would say uh, if you ever look for a scanner, you want a CCD based scanner. Do not buy one of the new modern sleek CIS scanners that are really thin, which they claim to be superior. They are not superior. CCD is the old proven tried and tested technology that is just far superior to CIS based scanners. So. Yeah, find an older one, uh, but they still make CCD scanners, like brand new ones, like this, the Epson 13000 XL, but they cost a lot of money. But CIS is just not worth spending the money on. Get an older scanner instead that's CCD based. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.